Have you ever heard someone who's building talk about uh, they're at roughing stage? If you've got no idea what roughing stage means, then stick around and I'll fill you in. So here we are back at our Culverston project. We're progressing really well. Um, as I stated in previous videos, we've broken the project up into three different stages, being the east wing, the west wing, and the main house. So the east and the west wing are at roughing stage and roughing has been completed. So I'll fill you in a little bit on exactly what roughing means. Ultimately, roughing in is when the specialised trades like the plumber, electrician, the aircon installer, and the securities and AV specialists come in and run all their cables into the walls prior to installing the wall linings, whether it's a wall board or plaster board. Generally, the first trade that comes in for the rough-in stage is the plumber. So plumber, as we all know, is um, sewer, stormwater, and water services. Um, in a bathroom is where most of his services are. Um, so behind me, you can see some you know, hot and cold taps. Um, you know, generally the red pipes in the walls relate to hot water and the black relates to cold water. Uh, so this is a mixer where the hot and cold water will come into the mixer. And once the mixer actually mixes the water together at the desired temperature, will come out through the spout. And so when we're talking spouts for vanities, um, this is a wall mixer. So the, the tap and the spout will come out of the wall into the basin compared to the vanity mounted basin, which will come out out of the top. So we've got to set these at the right height. We've got to be really cautious about um, and understand where the basin's going because we always want the spout to line up with the center of the plug and waste of the sink. Uh, with wall hung vanities, we've also got to make sure that we get the uh, sewer points within the wall so we can bring them up through the wall and actually sit inside the basin. All right, so once, this, once the plumber's been in and he's installed all of his services, we'll get the aircon guy um, or the contractor to come out and install, you know, his bit. So the key points or the key items we need to know about for the aircon is the location of the indoor unit, outdoor unit, and where the outlets are gonna go, and the return air. So, you know, air gets pushed out through the indoor unit, out through the outlets, and back in through the return air. As, as always, we've got to plan in the pre-construction place and locate the outlets. You know, in this house here, we've got some rake ceilings, and you can't get back into that roof to relocate that. So it's important to get them outlets or that ductwork close enough to where they gotta go. You know, a couple of other items we need to know about the aircon is the location of, you know, where the controller's gonna go. Um, so obviously, so you can turn it on and off, and this will also regulate the temperature in the house. In double storey um, areas, you know, it's always a good idea to have an upstairs and a downstairs arm um, controller, so you don't have to go downstairs in the middle of the night to either turn it on or off. So once the aircon and the plumbers have been in, we'll call in yeah, the sparky or the electrician to start running all these wires. So once the plumber and the aircon um, have finished roughing in what they need to do, the sparky will come in. So he's already got an electrical plan that we've prepared in the pre-construction process. And you know the key factors that are on the electrical plan are so lighting and power. Uh, so lighting will determine exactly where we're gonna switch the lights on to the different areas or the different rooms and what sort of light are they gonna turn on. So is it gonna be a wall light? Is it going to be a pendant light or a noise light in the center of the room or is it a group of down lights? Whether it's two, four, six or eight, all this is predetermined you know, in the whole design phase. Power points, you know, we can put power points Anywhere in the house, we usually put them in a designated area because power points should have a purpose. You know, for example, behind me, we're in the kitchen. Um, so, you know, this power point here is generally at 1.1. A normal bench height for a kitchen is 900 mil. So 1.1 is a perfect area to have. Um, and, you know, when thinking about power points in a kitchen, you know, think about where you're going to put your kitchen made. Um, you know, where are your appliances going to go? Your toasters, your kettles. So, you know, power points should go um, where they're fit for their purpose and where you intend to use that product. Uh, we've also got behind us, so um, with an oven, you know, we've got to be aware that we, we've got to run a cable from the oven directly to the meter board to have its own circuit because 
different ovens have different specifications and we've got to make sure that we supply a cable to suit that product or that oven, um, you know, and it all relates to how many amps does the product have. So is it a 20 amp? Is it a 25 amp or a 32 amp? And the cable gets rated based upon the specifications of that oven. Um, other items in regards to the kitchen while we're here is that, you know, we've always got to think about where the rain tool's got to go and we've got to um, run an exhaust to get all that air outside so it doesn't just go up into the roof. Um, and, and also, you know, designate a power point for the fridge here. Um, so this fridge here does have water and we've got, um, a, you know, a water point for that ready to go. Speaking of power on this job here, due to the sheer size of the home and the amount of electrical that has gone into this house, there's quite a large demand for power. So we had the electrical engineer look at the drawings prior to starting and we did exceed the um, standard power requirements or the amount of energy the electrical provider will give to you. So we've engaged a, a level one provider and what they've had to do is they've had to run a separate 200 amp cable from the substation, which is located down the road, across the road, through the footpath, and they've given us a private pillar, which we will connect to. Um, so that's a cost that needed to be incorporated into the job, but it wasn't a surprise. We were well aware of it um, in the whole pre-construction stage. So look, we've had our key um, services installed, you know, being the, the plumber, hydraulic, electrical and air conditioning. So other services that do go into a dwelling, which I won't you know, spend too much time on, are you know, alarms, CCTV, um, intercom, ducted vacuums, um, any smart home gear. You know, a lot of people are working with Google and Alexa these days. Um, yeah, there are other items that really need to be installed in at this rough end stage you know, prior to sheeting. And that's why it's so important at the pre-construction process to plan, because, you know, as the good old saying goes, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. So the trades have been in and they've roughed in all their services. Um, at this stage, we like to get the client to come in and we'll run through all the services that have been installed. And it's a really good stage for the client because they actually get to start visualizing how they're going to intend to use their home and you know where the services are going to go and you know what the bathrooms and the kitchens are going to look like so um, and also at this stage if something doesn't sit right or they need to make a change now is the ideal time to do it because it's easy to move a point or a cable or to add a power point in um, so yeah really important to get the client in at this stage um, once the client's happy and we've nailed all the services Next stages are, we'll get the plasterboard in, uh, we'll get the jib rockers in and they'll line the walls, they'll line the ceiling, set the joints, sand, so then we can get the, the wet areas underway. So we get the waterproofer in and the tiler can come in after that. Um, and then we can also start check measuring for different other items like you know, the kitchen. We've got walls in, we've got a physical space, so we can start check measuring and start making the cabinets because there's, you know, there's lead times on that sort of, um, on them items. So that pretty much um, sums up the whole roughing stage of what it is, who it is, and what's required. And as always, we try and bring you as much information in these videos so that you know, you're well informed. And when it's your turn to build, um, you're well aware of the building process and how we here at LCLD Projects approach it.